Alright you guys, so as many of you know, we had previously decided to use the Good and the Beautiful Math 5 and then after purchasing that and going to the homeschool convention and then seeing all of the beautiful math curriculums, I decided to change like any natural homeschooler does. <laughs> but I figured while I have this on hand, I could show you guys a look inside the Math 5 from The Good and the Beautiful. I will show you guys the uh, whole book just so you can kind of really get a feel for it. I'll show you what a lesson looks like in depth as well as an assessment. And then I'll show you a sneak peek inside the answer key and the mental math book just so you can get a real feel for the curriculum and see if this is something that you want to use in your homeschool. So I'm going to flip around the camera and show you guys inside. All right, you guys, as always, the planes seem to start up whenever I'm going to record a video. So just try to ignore the background. I'm sorry. Um, it shouldn't be too distracting though. They're usually not too bad. So this is the Good and the Beautiful Math Level 5. As you open it up, you'll see a table of contents that goes over every single lesson and what your child is going to be doing inside of each one. And then you will get an about the course section, supplies needed, lessons overview, and then some frequently asked questions. You will also get a unit overview at the beginning of every unit. There are four within the curriculum. And then it will go over the concepts taught, um, concepts reviewed and expanded upon, and then any extra supplies needed. Now, if you are planning on purchasing this for the entire set, that includes the course book, the mental math book, and the answer key, it is $58.97. If you are only needing like one or two of those items and you're planning on purchasing separately, the course book is $34.99, the mental math book is $11.99, and then the answer key is $11.99 as well. Or you can go to their website and put in your email where you will receive a free PDF of this entire curriculum. So that's really nice. I love how they have such a heart in helping homeschoolers and just making curriculum accessible to everyone. I think that that is such a beautiful trait from a curriculum company since not all of them offer <laughs> that kind of um, generous opportunity. Now, as far as lessons go, it is estimated to take about 35 to 45 minutes, four days a week, and there's about 120 lessons total, so that's going to be about 30 weeks long. There are optional videos that accompany these lessons, and overall the curriculum is designed for your child to be able to complete independently. Um, the lesson, the video lessons are usually from what I've seen in the past, pretty short and to the point. So it's nothing that is going to take 30 to 45 minutes watching a video and then your child jumps into the curriculum. Uh, when your child starts using this book, they do suggest that they have their multiplication facts mastered prior to starting or to spend time every day memorizing them. So you wanna make sure that your child is pretty solid in their multiplication facts. This is a spiral approach curriculum and throughout the year, your child is gonna cover various concepts. They're gonna do a lot of angle measurements, working with line and bar graphs. They're going to be estimating multiplication products. They're gonna be doing multiplication and division with powers of 10. They're gonna be learning prime factorization. They're gonna be doing some square roots, um, temperature, so they're gonna be working with Fahrenheit and Celsius conversions. They're gonna be doing conversions of decimals and percents to fractions. They're going to be working on rounding decimals, multiplying fractions, uh, learning circumferences, doing division with reciprocals converting fractions to a percent, and so much more. I just wanted to mention the, the big concepts that they're gonna be learning. And like I mentioned, there are four uh, units in this curriculum. And so with that, there are also four unit assessments. And that's also going to be about two, the last two lessons of the book. 
Now, um, because it is a higher level math, this does not come with a math box like the earlier grades. So if you are used to those, they do not have any. I'm not sure what level they stop using them at. I want to say it's level two, but it could be wrong. So if um, anyone happens to know the exact level where they stop using the math boxes, please feel free to comment that down below. Uh, but even though they don't have the math boxes, there are still going to be supplies that you're going to need for this. Um, some things are very basic, like scratch paper and, you know, pencils, a ruler, and things like that. Um, a few of the additional supplies that might not be as common is going to be a device to access videos if you wish to use them, some paper clips, a coin. Uh, an index card, some tape, a protractor, and some dies. So nothing too crazy or expensive, but something that you definitely want to make sure that you have on hand before your child starts the curriculum. And then one last thing that I want to mention is that while this curriculum is designed to be done independently by your child, you also know your child best. Some children, they still need that extra, you know, parental guidance when they get to the fifth grade uh, course book, but you will, regardless of whether or not your child is ready to work independently or still working with you, they will need some parent interaction when they do the mental math book because you're going to be testing them for accuracy. All right, so I just wanted to walk you guys through what a lesson looks like so you can really get a feel for it. I know I just did a whole flip through of the book, but um, I had one subscriber who asked for actual um, lesson walkthroughs, and I think that that was a great idea, so I decided to include them in some of my reviews. So this is lesson 34. Hopefully you guys can see that well. And so you are going to complete today's mental math map mysteries activity and then watch the video lesson or read the mini lesson. So if you choose to do the video lesson with your child, they can scan this QR code and then um, they can follow the video to figure out how to solve these or they can complete this mini lesson right here and um, go through it themselves. So the mini lesson uh, goes over what a fraction is compared to a whole. It talks about the numerator and the denominator and what those are. And then it says drawing pictures is one way to complete pair the fractions. All of these pictures show equal amounts and then it goes over all of the amounts for each one of those um, fractions right here. And then it talks about um, if the numerator is more than half of the denominator, the fraction is considered greater than one half. And so right there, four fifths is greater than one half. And then if the numerator is less than half of the denominator, the fraction is less than one half. And then it goes over steps to compare fractions by drawing pictures. It will give your child some additional information and then two example problems and then your child takes what they have learned and they go and practice it. So they write a fraction for the photos being shown. And then right here, they will circle the fraction that equals one half. 
Here they will put an X on a fraction that is less than one half, draw a box around fractions that are more than one half, and then here they're going to list each set of fractions in order from least to greatest. And then they will come over here and draw a photo to show um, what fraction this number is representing. And then compare the fractions by drawing pictures. You'll do that in this box. And then down here, they will spin a, play spin a pie game and it goes over the directions on how to create it just so they can get some extra fraction work in a fun way. And then on the next page, the game is continued and then they will review. So they will draw a congruent trapezoid and then a congruent pentagon. So it gives them the example and then a free box to draw those things in. Complete the number and patterns, then write each rule and then find the quotient using long division. And then that ends that lesson and you move on to the next one. All right, so here is what a unit assessment looks like. Uh, this is lessons 89 to 90. And so your child will do the purple box and if they get anything wrong, then they'll get additional practice in the orange boxes. So for this one, your child will do some converting between improper fractions and mixed numbers. Then they will do some greatest common factors they will use the lowest common denominator to find common denominators. They will convert fractions to percents. They will do rounding to the nearest whole number. They will multiply fractions by whole numbers and they will cancel before multiplying fractions. They will do some surface area of geometric solids. They will have some ratio work, graphing and transformations using zeros to subtract decimal numbers, using the distributive property, and then if they also forget how to do that, then it tells you what lesson to skim back to, so that's a nice feature, just so you're not having to go through the whole book. Um, they will do some multiplying and dividing decimal numbers by powers of 10, multiplying decimal numbers in general. They will do some time elapsed work, converting units of capacity, converting between decimal numbers of percents. They will do some division with fractions using reciprocals to divide. And they will do circles and circumferences of area. And then that is it. So the unit assessments are fairly easy as long as your child is grasping this. I do like how they give you the additional practice. So if they got anything wrong, they get to work a little bit more down here. Uh, it would be nice if they gave you some even more additional practice just in case your child is struggling with a certain concept. But also, as you can see, if your child is, you know, going through the lessons and not having too much difficulty, then the unit assessment really isn't terrible. I mean, like right this section is three problems that they have to solve. This one is about six. So it's nothing too in depth and extremely stressful, but it also is just going to depend on your child and, you know, their, their feelings on math and whether or not they're picking this up or not. All right, you guys. So here is a quick peek inside the answer key. I'm not going to do a full flip through of this, but just kind of give you a quick glimpse so you can get an idea. So it shows you the picture, basically what the, the same picture that the lesson has, and it will just give you the answer. So if you're looking for something that really walks you through each problem, I don't know how well you guys can see that but um, this is not going to do that for you. And that was one of my concerns with their grade four book that my son used was, you know, obviously dividing is going to be fairly simple, but when you get into the harder math, just giving the answer is not always going to bring understanding. Sometimes you need that walkthrough of like, okay, you get, you do this and then you do this and then you get this answer instead of just giving you the answer. And so if you are looking for something that really walks you through the answer key then um 
just be aware of this and you know how much of a pro and con that is for you personally so like this one you know my measurement is greater than 300 millimeters and then it will give you some hints so this says there are two millimeter numbers and one centimeter number to cross off so um and then for each one of these it just gives the answer all right, you guys, so now the mental math book. Um, I'm just gonna do another quick peek inside this one for you. So basically this takes about five minutes. You do it before, or your child does it before their course book. And so the way that it works is you basically fold the book. Your child will see this side and then you get the answer key right here. So you get to ask them the questions and then you have the answer. And so what one of those lessons looks like is say lesson 48, um, what coin is one tenth of a dollar? What coin is one fourth of a dollar? And then it has some calendar questions. There's measurements. There are 2000 pounds in one ton. How many pounds are in 18 tons? And then they're going to add these money amounts together. All right, you guys, so that is the end of the flip through. I hope that you liked seeing inside of it and I hope that it was helpful. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and I will see you again later. Bye.